What is up, YouTube? This is Red Leprechaun Gaming, and welcome back to Azerinth Healer, Book 1 by Rhaegar. Chapter 14, Party Life. As the elf retrieved its two swords from the discarded shield, the room exploded into motion. Most of the mages stopped casting spells at the elf and instead ran towards the barrier of wooden beams and caved in rock that led to the mine, a potential escape. Many of the warriors followed, eyes wide, as they tried to get away from the monster. The elf deflected a few more spells with his swords, grinning at the fleeing humans. Five or six of the remaining defenders prepared to engage the adversary and protect their fleeing comrades, Ilya included. Next to her, Oliver prepared glass shards, while Aaron was playing his massive loot. She healed an injured tank and switched to the left side of their small formation. Glenn and another warrior, a stocky man with a puckered scar under one eye, prepared their skills too. Completely ignoring the primary group ar arrayed in front of him, the elf sidestepped their defensive line with incredible speed. Dodging the glass shards thrown his way, he ran after the retreating members of the group instead. Turn back! Stand and fight or the monster will cut you down, Glenn shouted. But few heard his cries over the sounds echoing through the tunnel, and even fewer heeded what they heard. Magic and weapons alike hammered against the barrier at the other side of the long tunnel, as more and more of the assembled group used everything they had to break into the mine and get away from the elf. Fear clouded their minds, and they had their backs to the enemy as they tried frantically to create an exit. Quickly catching up to his prey, the elf left severed limbs and deep wounds behind as he cut clean through bone and armor with his curved blood-covered swords. Running after him, the stronger defenders got into loose formation once again. Glenn, the scarred warrior, and Aaron were in front, with Ilya Oliver and Eleonora at the back. The Enchantress had a huge smile on her face. Can't really blame her now, can I? Ilya thought. She was grinning too, partly from the adrenaline, from the danger, the blood, the smoke in the air, but most of all, because her ability to actually do something about this and join the fight filled her with joy. They ran over or decimated corpses, slowly gaining on the fast and skillfully moving elf. Some of the fighters at the barrier turned to face him, a familiar formation taking shape as the mages shot projectiles of different elements towards the fast-moving predator. The elf wheeled around them and crashed into the formation before they could flank him, dodging blows and deflecting strikes as his own swords left a swath of deep gashes and dented armor. Ilya blinked forward and managed to land a punch when an opening presented itself, destruction flashing up and into the elf, but the monster didn't even stop. Before she blinked back in retreat, the creature had followed her with a few steps and a slash faster than she could perceive, nearly severing her arm completely before she blinked back to her own formation and healed the damage. This guy rips through much people much higher level than you in one slash. No more stupid teleports. Work together with the others. Focus on healing. Around 15 people were now facing the elf at the mine barricade, while six approached from his rear, but he continued to advance while dodging or deflecting the magic and arrows of his prey. Turning to the nearest warrior, a lithe older woman with a rapier, the elf ducked under her blade and cut the warrior in half with a single clean slash. A sizzling ball of lightning managed to hit him in the chest, but it didn't even slow him down in the slightest. Two more warriors fell, and using the opening, he jumped into the group of mages. A whirlwind of blades, blood, and screams followed as he ripped his way through the group of casters. No longer smiling, Ilya activated her aura. It's not a fight, it's a massacre. And the elf was outnumbered 15 to 1. We don't stand a chance. Glenn, seemingly having reached the same conclusion, slowed down a little. We have to get through the barricade. Let's hope the stalker sightings mean that it's become a dungeon or we're all dead. Give it all you have. His sword started to glow, and a beam of red light flew over the mangled corpses into the battered barrier. Bits of wood shattered, but it wasn't enough to break through the thickly piled barricade, becoming a rock. Aaron slowed down as he spun around, throwing the monstrous loot with his full body weight at the barricade. Two massive fiery glass spears followed, the explosion nearly robbing Ilya of her hearing. A swing of Glenn's sword sent a wave of wind towards the barrier, clearing the dust and revealing another tunnel that led further into the darkness. It's open! Run for the... Glenn's shout was silenced when a curved blade slammed through his throat from behind. Run! Oliver cried, the group running for their lives. 
Only five meters away from the opening, the elf reached Aaron. The bard blocked the two swords with his armored arms, holding the weapons back for a second as he tried to keep the blades away from his chest. This is my chance. Ilya blinked above the elf. Already spinning in the air, she aimed a kick at his head. Unable to block her as his blades were stuck in Aaron's stony armor, the kick landed, pumping a fully charged burst of destruction into the blow. Ilya's shin cracked and splintered on impact, but the elf was sent flying. Aaron lurched as the swords were, for were forcibly dislodged from his arms, still in the clutches of the airborne elf. Ilya stumbled on landing and crashed into Aaron hard enough to send them both tumbling through the opening. They landed with a clatter, the air knocked from their lungs. Ding, you have entered the Cal the Cali's dungeon. Silence reigned. A few tense moments, Ilya realized that no one was following. After healing her shattered leg a bit, Ilya turned to Aaron and he used reconstruction on his arms. One of them had nearly been cut through completely. The man only grunted as the cuts closed, his flesh forming new connections. Finally looking around, Ilya saw Eleonora sitting next to her, her eyes sparkling with fascination as she observed the healing magic. Oliver was standing a little behind her. The warrior that had stood by their side was also with them. He wiped at his face, a large scar near his left eye now caked with blood. They were in a small cave. As Ilya looked back, she saw the elf was staring at them from the room they'd just escaped from, annoyance in his eyes. Dead bodies surrounded the motionless elf. No one else would be joining the group. Oliver was staring at the motionless elf, arms still raised to cast another spell. Why is he not attacking? Ilya asked. We're in a dungeon, Oliver said, his eyes never leaving the elf, arms still raised to cast another spell. They can't stand dungeons, no idea why, but many a time people they've hunted survived simply because of this fact. If the elves don't wait at the entrance for weeks, that is, let's hope this one has other plans. The elf sighed, then a smile once again spread across his face as he reached down to one of the corpses, lifting the body of a small man. He bit into the corpse's neck. Oh wow, that's disgusting, Ilya said. Finishing her healing of Aaron, Ilya stood up again to test her leg. It was already healed. I love this skill. That's some impressive healing. Thank you for saving my life, Aaron announced, stretching his newly fixed arm. Then he got up. I'm Aaron. Bard and Rock Enhancer. She clasped his huge hand. Ilya, Battle Healer, I guess. Nodding to that, Aaron looked around. I suggest we go in a bit further. We don't need to honor that monster with our presence any longer, Oliver said. He turned around and stalked deeper into the cave. Nobody seemed to be against this course of action, so they slowly began to follow. Taking one last glance the at the eating elf, Ilya locked eyes with him. A shiver ran down her spine but a smile soon came to her face. No, I won't fear him. In this world, I can become just as crazily strong as he is. Fighting like that must be amazing, and being able to fight against someone like that even more so. Plus, I now owe those bastards more than a decent beatdown. I now owe those bastards more than a decent beatdown. Gotta get a lot more powerful to return the favor, though joining her fists together like she had learned from one of the Azeroth fighting stance books. She broke eye contact and left the elf to his lunch. Your magic is beautiful, a female voice said next to her. Turning, Ilya found Eleonora staring at her with big eyes. If one counted the birds sitting on her shoulders, hair, arms, hovering around her, and perched on her bag, it was more than two eyes staring at Ilya. Not as brilliant as his, she motioned at the elf. But there's a controlled flow to it. I've never seen anything like it. The small woman was suddenly embracing Ilya, the birds joining in as they land on her hair and arms. I like you, the woman exclaimed. Ilya returned the hug a little apprehensively. She started to shuffle the two of them forward as the others talked. I'm happy to hear that, but let's keep moving, though. A minute later, the cave opened into a larger cavern, with several tunnel openings peppering it like a honeycomb. Sitting on the ground, the warrior with the scar rested his back against a rock and closed his eyes while chuckling. What a fucking day. Hope to never see those bastards again. Grunting at that, Oliver looked around the room. Should have gone east then and not stayed so close to the forest, you idiot. The smile on his face and tone removed any possibility of interpreting the jab as an actual insult. I know, I know, but the laws are a bit looser here. 
and the women, the warrior stopped talking as Ilya and Eleonora stepped up beside him. Oh, don't worry about us. I do believe we can take a joke without melting, Ilya said as Eleonora finally released her from the hug. I probably don't have to remind you, as you are all rather skilled fighters, but we are in a dungeon, Aaron said in a more serious tone. And if the stories about stalker hounds are true, then we better be ready to work together, at least until we find another exit. I'm not risking going back the way we came, although I am glad we survived that. Any of you lose anyone back there? I did know Glenn. He was a massive shit, though, the seated warrior said. Don't get me wrong, the elves are a lot worse, but yeah. Plus, I owed him some gambling money. You didn't hear that, though. I suppose we should get to know each other if we're going to be stuck together a while, Aaron said. The warrior jumped up and dusted himself off. Ilya noticed now that he wore dark brown leather armor lined with bits of steel. The two belts around his waist had several small quivers hanging from them. Well, I'll start. Name's Gier... Name's Geronimo, warrior and ranger, around spelled G-E-R-O-N-I-M-O, -O. warrior and ranger, around level 60 warrior, 50s ranger. I won't tank. I lost my crossbow while running for my life. Twirling this short sword around a couple of times, twirling his short sword around a couple of times, he bowed. Oliver, you might have seen me in the arena. Glass mage around level around level 70, ranged. So I'll stay back with Eleonora, Oliver said while looking at the enchantress. A flame conjured above his shoulder lit the surroundings. I'm Eleonora, but you guys can call me Ellie. Wait, I have to check my level. Ah, uh, it's 92 for tamer at the moment, and 78 for enchantress. My birds can throw bombs, and I can also make shields and other enchantments. I'm Ilya. Healer and close combat fighter. Both one class. It's only level 47, though. None of the others seem to be bothered by her comparatively low level. I'm Aaron, bard and rock enhancer. Both around level 60. Glad to have a healer on the team, and a fighting one at that, apparently. So the introduction's over. The group looked around at each other. So what do you guys want to do? Aaron continued. We could wait here for a day or two, gambling to see if he leaves, or we could try and find another way out. I doubt this was the only entrance to the mine. It became a dungeon, and that doesn't change that fact. I also doubt we have enough food and water to stay here. Looking at the group, only silence was his answer. Well then, I suggest we start moving. Me and Geronimo at the front, Ilya, Oliver, and Ellie at the back. Nobody seemed to question the leading role Aaron had assumed, even though he was the second lowest in level. Glad I didn't land here with idiots. Getting into the suggested formation, the group followed Aaron's lead and moved to one of the tunnels. Stalker hounds range from the mid-double digits to the lower hundreds in level. So let's not try to fight too many at once, Aaron concluded, and the group continued on without another word. All of them were working through what had happened just 15 minutes ago on their way in. Talking, apparently, was not part of it. The group continued for 20 minutes in silence remaining vigilant for any danger. They were in a dungeon, after all. The whole mine seemed deserted. Some tools and wagons remained, rotting and rusting away in the mine tunnels. If it hadn't been for Oliver's fire, it would have been completely dark. Reaching an old waypoint, they opened an ancient door in the rock to find a rather spacious room. It might once have been a sleeping quarters, dug out directly from the earth though it was barely more than a sparsely furnished cavern. There's wood over there, and those rags seem good enough for sleeping, said Oliver, motioning to the tattered sleeping cloths and the tools in the room. Might as well stay the night. Immediately slumping down, Eleanor seemed to fall asleep instantaneously. Oliver, fire. Ger Geronimo, help me close up that door again. Ilya, can you check supplies? Everyone started moving at Aaron's words, and soon a small fire was crackling in the room. Light soon danced on the cave walls around them, and the door was barred once more. It's not a lot. Looking over the things Ilya had found, Aaron obviously wasn't pleased. Guess it's stalker hound and whatever else we find that's on the menu for tomorrow. We'll plan more in the morning. 
This is as safe as we'll get. I'll take first watch. Everyone, including Ilya, got to sleeping pretty quickly. The exhaustion from so many near-death experiences and seeing a whole group of people completely wiped out, not easily brushed off, even by veterans. Waking up a couple of hours later, Ilya motioned for Aaron to get some sleep. Man, I'm glad for my class. I barely need to sleep any more than this. Although, once I'm safe again, I'll sleep for like 12 hours. Wait, my bed! Oh no. I fucking hope those shitty elves didn't ruin my beloved bed. I just got it. You seem upset. Bad dreams? Aaron asked as he laid down. Something like that, yeah, Ilya answered in a thoughtful voice. She took his place next to the fire and watched the barricade. The night passed without any further disturbance. Ilya let the others sleep a while, while she kept her aura up and moved through some of the stances as quietly as possible, until her mana had fallen by half. Aaron was the first to get up again to her surprise. Yawning, he looked up at her. Still up, or did you rotate through and forget about me? His answer was Ilya's shaking head. You have some passive skill or something that reduces the amount of sleep you need. This time he got a nod from her. Nice. Not too uncommon for healers. Many envy that trait, but then again, few envy healers, unless there's one of them saving their ass. Chuckling slightly, Aaron sat down the opposite side of the fire from her. her she smiled in return. Shame what happened to those people, Ilya said after a few long moments of silence. I'm new around here. How common are attacks like that? Yeah, I knew some of them. Nobody too close, but it's a shame. It's been a long while since the last elven attacks. Maybe a couple months. We're close to the Navel Forest. Navali Forest. So it's a given. But this one was different. Normally it's just one elf. It's rare for them to travel in groups. The guards often spot them a mile off, given the destruction they leave in their wake. Usually they send a full squadron of high-level adventurers. The creatures are stopped so far from town the citizens are none the wiser. Prevents panic. They haven't directly attacked a city in years, maybe a decade or two. I guess they just waited for us to be preoccupied. Something like the 50th festival makes for a great distraction. Staring at the fire for a minute more, Aaron continued. I just hope the city's still standing, and that we got some of them. Not likely, though. They're great at fighting and magic, but even greater at running away after. Picking up a stick and playing with the fire, he returned to silence. Trying to change the obviously difficult topic for Aaron, Ilya started again. You're a rock enhancer, right? She took his silence for affirmation. I'm pretty far away from me my healing order, and we didn't train in anything else but our fighting and healing. I saw some pretty impressive skills at the tournament, though, and thought of getting an enhancement class, seeing as I fight with my body. What would you suggest? Oh, and I know very little about all this. My order literally ignored anything not having to do with their own greatness. Hmm. Well, first off, you're rather open about your lack of knowledge. Be careful with that. Folks are likely to take advantage. You saved my life, though, so I'll help you any way I can. Enhancements. Well, it's always a personal thing. There are many elemental enhancements, like my rock enhancer class. It's a pretty defensive one, though. Fire, ice, and lightning, for example, are more offensive. Ice is precise and deadly, as well as defensive. Fire is solely damage, and lightning is speed-oriented. There's a lot of skills in each one of them, though, so you won't be trapped in one style of fighting. There is also a myriad of other enhancer classes, non-elemental even, and I definitely don't know all of them. Any ideas about what you want to go? After seeing Jayara, I kind of want to go for fire. Are there differences in class strengths? Also, how do you get said class? Actually, what if I want to change later on? Looking a bit confused at her, Eren stopped playing with the fire. There are definitely differences in strength between classes. Some of the rarer ones, like I imagine your healing and fighting one is, can be acquired through specific tasks or requirements having been met. There are stories of people getting very advanced classes at their first one. The normal way, though, is to get the most basic class in the area and work your way up from there. So to be a fire enhancer, or to be like Jayara, I think he's a pyro enhancer, I'd suggest simply being a fire mage. Once you reach a certain requirement, you'll get the chance to upgrade your class. You'll keep the skills you have, or they'll change according to your new class. Plus, uh, plus, of course, the class bonuses themselves change. The higher the level, the more specialized people are. At least that's normally the case. You don't choose any levels in the class, though. So starting as a fire mage isn't a bad investment. I don't know how much about... 
Oh, you don't lose any levels in the class change, though. So starting as a fire mage isn't a bad investment. I don't know how much about that, though. Maybe Oliver over there can help you get started. Usually a service like that would cost you quite a bit of gold, but our current circumstances might change that a little. I suggest taking full advantage. He winked at her before continuing. As for the strengths, well, they're mostly related to the skills you have and what level they are. I won't pry, but a level 47 shouldn't have been able to move that elf with a mere kick. I'm assuming your skill level and whatever you used is pretty high. More specialized or higher classes give you access to better, more specialized skills. A very highly leveled normal fireball can win against a low-leveled sun meteor, although the base skills are very different in placed in power. That's very informative, thanks. I guess I'll ask Oliver about some lessons in fire magic later. What skill levels should someone at 47 have, then, if you don't mind telling me? Standing up and stretching, another yawn escaped Aaron. Maybe level 10 at most? In the second or first tier, Aaron immediately stopped his stretch, looking at her with big eyes. You don't mean to tell me you have skills in the second tier. What in the hell did you do? Looking at the ground, Ilya couldn't help but smile. Maybe giving away that information's a bit risky, but he seems trustworthy. Plus, I just saved his life, and I'm gaining a lot here anyways. Mostly, I fought against alone against monsters a much higher level than me. Well, standing there for half a minute, Aaron seemed to be looking for words. That would explain it, yeah. Although I'm pretty sure you're aware of how incredibly stupid and risky that is. People normally go for the safest route possible in leveling. Even in a group of five or more people with a healer and someone to tank the monsters, it's uncommon to go against anything at the same level, let alone higher. And alone? You're one of the cr those crazy people, eh? I mean, I'm not judging, but take my advice here. Not many of your kind live through their 20s. You're a healer, though, so maybe you have better chances still. It's very dangerous to do what you're doing. Smiling brightly at him, she answered, I know. I love it, though. And that's the end of chapter 14. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, have fun, guys.